When I was 300 pounds, I thought that I would be obese for the rest of my life. I thought that I would never lose the weight. I never thought that I could run a single mile, much less a hundred mile foot race in the Rocky Mountains. Until now. When I weighed 300 pounds, I would have never imagined myself running a single mile, much less being at the starting line of the Leadville 100. At 27 years old, I had accepted that I would be obese for the rest of my life. I had accepted that I would always be uncomfortable with the person staring back at me in the mirror. However, on August 18th, 2018, at 4 a.m., I found myself on the starting line of the Leadville 100. I was no longer obese. I had taken my abused body and turned it into an athletic machine that was going to run for the next 30 hours until I crossed the finish line. The Leadville 100 trail race is the second oldest 100 mile foot race in America. The starting line is at an elevation of over 10,000 feet above sea level. You will climb 15,000 feet during the 100 miles and you only have 30 hours to do it. There is very little stopping, no sleeping, and has a finishing rate of just over 50%, which is one of the most bleak finisher rates of any 100 mile race. But nothing was going to stop me from finishing. One day I stepped on the scale and we had kind of a rotary style scale that the, uh, the dial is like a clock. And uh, I had not stepped on the scale probably since the last time I was at a doctor's office in months, if not years. And I had no idea what I weighed. And the scale only went up to 300. It was like it stopped just short. In slow motion at 297. And it was almost this realization to me that this scale doesn't go above 300 and neither will I. I couldn't just continue to be complacent that, that I in fact was responsible for what I was seeing on the scale, that I was responsible for what I was seeing in the mirror. And I was also responsible if I wanted to do something about it. His weight has crept on in my eyes so slowly that I never saw him as a big guy. To me, he was a few pounds overweight. Even when he was almost 300 pounds, he, to me, was my husband. He just had, I always thought it was 20 pounds extra. Uh, there was just 20 pounds extra to love. Um, and I know that sounds, cliche, but it, the weight didn't matter to me. I first heard of Leadville pretty early on in my weight loss journey. I was actually pretty overweight whenever I bought my first pair of running shoes and immediately started reading books about running and Leadville kept coming up over and over again. My first race was actually the Leadville Heavy Half, which I signed up for on only three days notice before the race. And at that point, the most I had run was eight miles at sea level. And here I was, my first race in Leadville, three days notice, uh, was gonna be 15 and a half miles at over 10,000 feet above sea level. In that first race, something within me changed. I crossed the finish line and I wondered if I could accomplish more. Maybe there was more untapped potential within. When I got to the start of the 100 mile course, I found myself feeling like I was in that same place, a bit underprepared. I actually was injured for five out of the nine months leading up to the race, and I couldn't uh, run for five months. My longest run to date was actually only 31 miles, which of course was a third of what I was gonna need to run in the next 30 hours. And when I sat on the starting line at 4 a.m. that morning, and I started to think about my journey and losing the weight, keeping it off, everything that it had taken to the, get to this point, running 100 miles in 30 hours really kind of paled in comparison to all the hard work that I had already put in. 
Good morning, Leadville family. Welcome to the 36th anniversary of the Race Across the Sky. We're so excited to have you all here. We have a saying in Leadville that you don't find Leadville, Leadville finds you. In Leadville, you do more, you be more, and you dig deeper than you ever thought possible. Inside each and every one of you is an inexhaustible well of grit, guts, and determination. And when you need it the most, all you have to do is have the courage to reach down inside and get it. Let go for 100 pain. It's only going to last for 30 hours till you step on that finish line. Because I will tell you, you cross that finish line, that finish line is magic. That finish line will change your life. What will get you to the finish line? That one thing, that's commitment. Total commitment. I'm gonna ask you, will you make that commitment? Fresh batteries and everything like that. As soon as lunch is ready, we can we can break for lunch, and while we're eating lunch, we can do uh, cleaning. So first off, before we get started, I just want to say thanks everybody for being here. Um, obviously, it's uh, uh, for me personally a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. Don't plan on being here again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I appreciate the the miles, the plane tickets, the missed work. Um, and uh, I couldn't think of a better group to be here with, so I appreciate it. I'm going to go over all the race day instructions every single time I come in, remind me to stretch. I don't plan on stopping at an aid station and sitting down until mile 60, which is Twin Lakes the second time. A lot of time can be lost inside of aid stations, so really the goal is to lose as little time as possible. Encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. Um, for me, you know, quitting is not an option on this. Ready to do it? Yeah, I guess like five hours last night. Five sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get to the point to where five hours sounds great? Five hours of sleep before. And it's, and it's now two thirty. Five hours of sleep right before like thirty-five hours of no sleep. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely it normal. Sounds normal. Let's check weather to start. Currently forty-six degrees. By the time it gets to 8, it's going to be 50, so it should be nice. I'm put on gloves up there. You ready to do this? Yeah, man. Hey, buddy. Love you, man. Keep on running, dude. Right, yeah. See you soon. Yeah. Keep right on, on running. Right hey. Love you. Proud of you. How are you feeling? I feel good. 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 I feel really good. How do you feel? I'm great. I'm great. Can you pay attention to time? We came in at like 44. So at 49, I want to be gone. When we get to twin, I want to switch. The headlamp that I had on is not bright enough. Cut off here is 10 a.m. Yeah. Hour and 45 minutes. Uh, is this a dream? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. You're, doing it, You're looking good. Mm. Love you. Okay. Bye. Up. Get Keep it, bro. Get it. Keep going. Keep going. You, you got this.
so good. Your shoes good? Thank you. You look, you look real good. You look great. You wanna, um, look good. My knees and my quads are just from the downhill. So yeah. What's our cutoff here? Two o'clock. What time is it now? Oh, oh, 4 to 1. So you got an hour and 15. Okay. You're, You're good. good. You're, You're you good. got plenty of time. Oh, feel good. You look damn good. This is how you find out who your true friends are. That's right. Right? Um, you got about 10 minutes to get out of here. I'm going to be out in five. Okay. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all. So we'll bring Tylenol, we'll bring the roller. Tylenol, bring the roller. Miles 40 to 60 at Leadville are by far the most difficult and where for many their race falls apart. And at mile 50, I was told by my crew that I would need to make the second ascent faster than the first or else I wouldn't make the next cutoff and my race would be over. As I reached the summit for the second time, the sun was starting to set on day one and I had been running almost nonstop for over 15 hours. My legs were tired. I was mentally exhausted, but I wasn't finished. I would not allow myself to quit. I reminded myself how far I had come and that I didn't come this far to fail. Nothing was going to stop me from crossing the finish line. You had to push there, but you did it, and now you're gonna go kick ass and have some rest. Thank you. You got this. I go was to be here by now. We got kind of caught up behind some people up at the top on the way in. I want to get out of here in seven minutes. Seven. Food is in the air. Let me know if it's too much. You good? Good. Not so hard, but it feels good, just not so hard. <laughs> a little less hard. Still a little less hard. <laughs> time. What's our time? 9:20. Okay, we gotta get out. Yeah, two minutes. We gotta get out. Wipe your face and let's roll. It. Okay. All right. What time is it? Time check. 22. 9:22. We're good. You'll be out of here. You'll be. You'll be out. You'll be out of here by 9:25. <laughs> oh, I need to stretch first. I gotta stretch first. Yeah, stretch, stretch, stretch. You doing okay? You're good. You look good. It. You it. We're early, right? Are you still able to run? No. No? We didn't run. You're done with your earbuds, right? We just go gentle. Go gentle. Let's just start gentle. Oh my gosh, it's so painful. And then after power line, it's mostly really all we use from there to, to make clean. Yeah, yeah, the only thing is the, the downhill is just coming. Right, I know. We're gonna just have to try and do what we can. I'm just not able to run much. Yeah. <laughs> Still able to shuffle a little bit? Not really. Kind of just mostly power walking. Yeah, man, it's just painful. It's just freaking painful. Yeah. Man, just let's know you're alive. And uh, this transition's got to be quick. Super, super quick. Doing good, Rick. Doing good. Where's He's that? doing good. He's getting a little bit tired, uh, but that's understandable. He's 90 miles into a race. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's, he needs some food, get some calories in him. Be very generous, please. The sun, the sun is about to come up. That's going to rejuvenate oh, you a I bit. Need, I need glasses, please. Well, you, oh, you guys crushed it, man. Put them in your pack. Yeah. Yeah. I went fast. Yeah, we did no, no, good. Wanna, this I last wanna, section around the lake was fucking brutal. It was all rocks, uh, slippery rocks, just up and down. How are those downhills feeling, Jason? Uh, they feel pretty terrible right now. <laughs> Is this real? <laughs> real. Yeah. Are we almost done? Three hours, you guys yourself yeah. a nice shiny buckle. Come on. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. 18 minute miles. Yeah. Okay. 17, plan on 17. Yeah, shoot for 17. Shoot for 17, give yourself some time to spare. Just keep him moving forward. That will happen. We're not leaving without a buckle. All right, let's get him on his feet. All right, you got it. All right. All right, I'll finish this. You got gloves? Head of boy. Gloves just go on. Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you finish. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at the finish. All right, All right buddy. All right. Let's go. 30 miles, 30 miles. Go get it. Right. We'll see you in a bit. Let's go.
All right, guys, crush it. You hear it said that every journey begins with a single step. My weight loss journey began with a single step and finishing the Leadville 100 also began with a single step. At 29 hours, 25 minutes and 52 seconds, I crossed the finish line. I felt like I had lived an entire lifetime during the past 30 hours and after running 100 miles, I was forever changed. Not only had I finished a 100 mile foot race, but more importantly, I was no longer obese. I was no longer uncomfortable with the person staring back at me in the mirror and I had taken full responsibility for my life. My lesson throughout this race and my journey is that we are all capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for. Within each of us is the ability to change and rewrite our story. Our stories are not written for us. We write our own stories.